Thank you. Thank you. We are here today because we believe in freedom. We stand in solidarity with the Iranian people. We stand against the mullahs who have caused untold terror to your beloved country. With their repression and reign of terror, the mullahs deny the people of Iran the pride of their extraordinary heritage, a heritage admired across the globe. Iran, a country which gave us the first human civilization, ahead of Egypt by 500 years and Rome by 4,000 years, must be free. Iran, which created the first empire of the world spanning Europe, Africa, and Asia, the first standardized standardization of weights and measures by a government, the first insurance by a government, the inventor of Sanskrit, the mother tongue of all modern languages, must be free. Iran, which created the first accounting tools, the first caesarean operation, and more advances in architecture, astronomy, mathematics, and the sciences than I can mention, must be free. But, but perhaps most important of all Iran's accomplishments for those of us gathered here today is that of King Darius. King Darius of Persia wrote the first human rights charter some 2,500 years ago. It is still engraved in the Alvan Mountain near the ancient Persian capital of Hag Matena. It was this concept of human rights, freedom of religion, and the equality of all races that led to the freedom of the Jews from the captivity of Babylon by Cyrus the Great of Persia. So today, so today, in recognition of the, of the great gifts of the great land of Iran, it is time for the mullahs to live up to the legacy of respect for freedom and human rights, which are the legacy and the proper inheritance of the Iranian people. <laughs> the mullahs target refugees in Camp Liberty in Iraq, freedom fighters in Syria, and terrorists in Lebanon. The mullahs, Iran targets dissidents, journalists, protesters, ethnic and religious minorities, and human rights defenders. The mullahs imprison, torture, and sentence to death those who dare speak truth to power. Executions in Iran surged to nearly 1,000 in 2015, the highest level in more than a century. But the largest group the mullah targets makes up fully half the population of the country, and that is women. Women in Iran comp comprise half the students in higher education, yet make up only 16% of the labor force. Where men make nearly five times the salary of their female counterparts, if a husband doesn't want his wife to work, he can legally prevent her. It is time to free Iran. Under the mullahs, women are banned from pursuing a long litany of professions. For instance, a recent lawsuit attempts to prevent women from singing solos in concerts. It is time to free Iran.
at home, women who are battered, beaten, brutalized, and raped can expect police and prosecutors and judges to fail to investigate cases, stop prosecutions, and dismiss charges. It is time to free Iran. Sixty-six percent of Iranian women in a recent poll reported being physically assaulted by their husbands and family members. Marital rape is not illegal. It is time to free Iran. In order to file for divorce, a woman must prove a significant threat on her life. Recently, a woman was executed for killing her husband who repeatedly beat her. Child marriage is prevalent, and the legal age for marrying off a daughter is 13 years old, and with court permission, nine years old. In 2011, nearly 50,000 little girls between 10 and 14 were married. They might call it marriage but others would call that spade sexual slavery. It is time to free Iran. Mothers are at additional risk as nationality laws do not allow Iranian women to pass on their nationality to their children, putting the kids at risk of statelessness and making women even more beholden to their husbands. The repression of women extends beyond the home. Women are legally banned from attending volleyball tournaments even when their husbands and sons are playing. It is time to free Iran. The Islamic dress code provides for two months and 10 days in prison for women caught wi without wearing the hijab. 30,000 women were imprisoned by the morality p police between 2003 and 2013. There has been a horrific increase in acid attacks against women perceived to be in violation of the dress code. Recently, special Forces known as the promoters of virtue and the preventers of vice, the morality police, attacked with batons those who dared protest against these policies. It is time to free Iran. And what happens to those who go to jail? Here are some headlines from a recent Daily Mail article. Sleeping in solid, squalid conditions, queuing for hours on end for food, and struggling to care for a newborn baby are just some of the horrifying challenges girls in Iran's grim prisons face. Dozens of juvenile offenders, some of whom are just nine years old, are languishing on death row for crimes such as murder, drug trafficking, and armed robbery. In Iran, the second biggest user of capital punishment in the world, young women can be hanged for crimes following unfair trials, including those based on forced confessions extracted through torture and other ill treatment. The frightened girls are imprisoned in a juvenile delinquents correction center, and after their verdicts, and a large number of the inmates are then killed on their 18th birthday. Human rights abuses like these are part and parcel of daily life in Iran. It is time to free Iran. We cannot say we did not know. The time has long passed for Iran to end these widespread abuses. They are wrong, and they are violations of international human rights law.
Firdausi was the greatest Iranian poet. When he turned in the manuscript, it took 35 years to write, and the king abused him. He spoke truth to power. He wrote, heaven's vengeance will not forget. Shrink, tyrant, from my words of fire, and tremble at a poet's ire. Today, let us all take up Ferdazi's calls. Let the mullah tyrants tremble and shrink as we join with the people in Iran and speak truth to power. It is time to free Iran. 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 It is time to free Iran.